Look, insurance sucks. I just make it suck less. I'm a health insurance hustle up. Bradley Hanlon's the name. We're back at the whiteboard today and we're in the series Back to the Basics, right? This, the whole idea, the whole thought behind this series is that we can help both agents and consumers like this channel. You might have stumbled on it as a consumer and seen a bunch of videos training agents. I love to do that, but I also wanna make sure that consumers and new agents are making sure that we're selecting the right plans for our clients, right? Today we're gonna to talk about Obamacare versus private options, right? Marketplace, ACA, Obamacare, same thing, versus alternative options, which we'll just title private, right? Private options, non-government affiliated health insurance options, right? So what are the differences and why might I go with a private option over a, uh, uh, an Obamacare option, right? Well, Obamacare, the big thing, right? And we'll just put a star here because this is a big one. We'll just say free preventative, okay? This is a big one. So if you are somebody that qualifies for somewhat of a subsidy, right? If, you're, if the premium is not astronomical, because you know there's no such thing as free if I'm paying $2,000 a month for my health insurance, right? It's not free if I'm paying $900 for a plan or 800 is the cheapest plan option for my young family, right? Free preventative is not necessarily free. I'm paying for it in the form of my premium. However, if you qualify for a lower premium ACA plan, this free preventative is gonna be something you really enjoy because that is, a, that is basically an essential health benefit on an Obamacare plan. You're gonna have free blood work, uh, free, a free checkup once a year, um, even free mammography, colonoscopy, things like that are all essential health benefits. Some, uh, the other big difference, okay, another one is uh, mental health coverage, okay? Mental health is covered pretty well in most cases on Obamacare plans. These are just very general uh, statements, of course, because we're, we're comparing all of the options and there's many different carriers over here and there's many different carriers over here, but we're just giving you some general differences so that maybe as you're selecting coverage for your family and maybe you're working with an agent, maybe you're not and you need to be, but either way, you kind of know what might be the best route for you, right? So mental health, um, another big <coughs> thing about Obamacare, okay, this is uh, more of a negative, but we're just listing the kind of the traits of each, uh, would be that there's more limited networks, okay, which what I mean by that when I say limited network is that you, you, you in a lot of states, okay, I don't know where you are, um, you know, I know like a state like Pennsylvania, we've got PPO, some PPO options, but a state like Florida, there really is no PPO option in the marketplace in this current plan year. That could be changing, but generally speaking, you're going to have a more limited network. So if you're somebody that travels and you're, you're seeing, you know, 20, 30 states a year and you're traveling to 200, 100, you know, 50 days a year even, you may want to double check this because your coverage may not be nationwide, okay? And that could become an issue for you, right? So a little bit more limited network. And again, a general, just a, as a general rule of thumb, if you're not qualifying for um, uh, cost sharing or anything like that, you may have higher deductible, okay? Or higher maximum out of pocket. Um, many of these plans come with copays. Okay, and we talked about copays in another video. It's not necessarily the end all, be all, but these are just some general traits of an Obamacare plan. Now, who's an Obamacare or an ACA plan good for? Uh, it's good for individuals that are kind of mid to lower income. Even even that upper middle class now is getting taken care of with a subsidy. So, you know, definitely shop these options. Um, it's also good for somebody that has major pre-existing conditions because private options, while they are generally, okay, we're just going to talk general again, they're generally cheaper. They don't cover a lot of times pre-existing conditions. We'll just put no pre-ex coverage, <coughs> which means that, you know, if you're somebody that just survived a stroke last year or uh, if you have, you know, diabetes or if you have some major health conditions that you're seeing a doctor for regularly, I wouldn't let a broker, I wouldn't steer somebody into that. So I wouldn't let another agent steer you into 
a private option if you need to be on a major medical Obamacare plan. So no pre-existing coverage. Uh, let's talk about some good things with short-term medical or private options, we'll just say. Uh, larger networks, typically speaking, these plans are going to run on, na uh, on a PPO, which is going to give you nationwide coverage rather than no nationwide over here. Okay, a lot of times you can get a lower deductible. And now let's look at another negative of the private option. And hopefully you guys see that, you know, I, I take a very uh, objective, I think that's the right word, very objective stance to this. I'm not, you know, sold on one idea over the other. I think it's totally dependent on the person, their situation, and also uh, their preference, right? If I, I've talked to people that say, hey, I don't care if I pay $2,000 a month for a plan. I want, it to, I want to make sure it covers everything, and I want to make sure it is a Cadillac plan because money's no object. I've literally had people say that to me. So it is definitely, uh, there's some personal preference in there as well. Um, let's talk about a negative with the private option. Generally speaking, there's no or very little preventative coverage. Now, I'm just going to tell you my scenario. For my family, <clears throat> it would be $800 a month. Uh, maybe I need some preventative care. I keep coughing. Uh, for my family, it would be $800 a month, okay, for an ACA plan, for the cheapest ACA plan. Now, I would get free preventative for $800 a month, okay, or over here, I could be at about $500 a month, and I can put $300 a, a month, $300 or $3,600 a year into another account, or I could just tuck it away. And that $3,600 a lot of times is going to cover that preventative care, okay, that is not going to be covered fully on a private option. Now, there are ways we can supplement that plan, and we talked about some supplemental coverage before, but as far as from a very basic standpoint, I want you to understand that you don't just have to look at this, or you don't just have to look at this, you have options, right? Working with a broker, working with an agent like myself that has access to just about every carrier or one of my agents on the team, you will have access to every single option available. Really, if we can't sell it, we know somebody that can and we will refer you happily to somebody who can take care of you, right? We're going to take an objective stance. We're going to make sure that you have the best coverage at the best price to fit your situation.